for spacious skies, for amber waves of green, for purple mountain majesty above the fruity plains, America, America, God sheds his grace on thee and crown thy goods with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Passion stress a thoroughfare of freedom be across the wilderness America America God mends thy every flaw confirm soul in self-control thy liberty in law oh beautiful for patriots dreams and seas beyond the years thy Undimmed by human tears America, America God sheds his grace on thee And crown thy good with brotherhood From sea to shine in sea and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. We welcome you to this liturgy for the annual meeting of St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. We'll be meeting virtually but we welcome you now to our opening liturgy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed God, who has caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for this nation. Almighty God, you have made all the people of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and peace. 
Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Here is a reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the name of the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of, the la out of slavery and who did the great signs in our sight. He protected us all the way, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said, You cannot serve the Lord for he is holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn to do you harm after having done good to you. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord and serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Again, let me welcome you actually into historic St. Philip's Episcopal Church. We have not been in this building for eight months. And while we have been away, Greg Yankee, our, our junior warden, has seen to it that it has been repaired. So some of you, well, all of you, actually, St. Philippians, will be seeing the building fresh and painted and new, which you haven't seen in a long, long time. And so that was part of the reason we wanted to begin the annual meeting here in the sanctuary so that you can once again see this space, which we will again 
inhabit. As our bishop said not very long ago, for now the church has left the building. But the building's still here, and it looks better than it has looked since I've known the building for a very long time, and we're grateful for that. I chose, actually, last week's Old Testament lesson from Joshua as our scripture reading for this day because it just seemed to be right for us who have been away from what has been comfortable for so long. Joshua has gathered the people who have made it through the wilderness. Not, not, not like our wilderness. Most of us are not suffering as much as if we were in the desert. But stay with the metaphor. Joshua has gathered the people as they've come out of a 40-year journey through the wilderness. And when he does gather them, he pulls them together through their elders and says to them, let me give you your history. You remember that God has called you to be a people, that God called Abraham and brought you to that land. And Abraham had Isaac and then Jacob and he re rehearses their history. It's a good thing to do. It's a very good thing to do to rehearse our history now and then. To forget our history is a dangerous thing indeed. So Joshua tells them their history. And then he says something that just caught my heart. He said, now choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And he meant it. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we'll serve the Lord. But if you want to serve the God of the Amorites, in whose land we now live, you must do that. If you want to follow the gods of our ancestors across the river, you can do that. But you have to make a decision. This has been a time like that. We have not had this kind of holy space in which to worship. We have not been able to gather and exchange the peace and to greet one another and encourage one another. This has been our own sort of wilderness journey. And now, well not now, but when we can come safely back together to be in this building, when we can safely embrace one another, It'll be a while yet. It'll be a good while yet. But I want to say the same thing will hold true then. We have been away from the community of the faithful for a very long time. And it's a good time to say, whom shall we serve? Oh, there, you know, there are so many gods around us. We're, we're not any different than the ones who had to struggle. Well, the Amorite gods look pretty attractive. The gods that my parents knew, that's good. That's, that's grandparents. Look at us. We, we have made gods of so much of our culture. We have made gods of, of an electoral process so that we feel better if we're with this group or this group and we shout obscenities back and forth at one another. That's nothing but 
the God of political process. We've allowed it to get elevated so high that it makes us feel righteous and good like God is supposed to make us feel righteous and good. We have to remember that there's a faithful promise behind political parties and all of this process that we can be a nation of one people. We forget that and we turn this awful process into something like our own little God where we worship at the feet of, of process. Oh, there's all kinds of God. We've been raised, all of us have been raised in a consumer culture that tells us that our true happiness comes from getting more, having more, having power, having money. That's the most powerful God that we're tempted with, you know, this, this God of money and power and success. We have a hard time keeping that God under control. And the only way we can do it is to allow the God of Israel, the God that brings us Jesus Christ, to reign supreme. We're lost. I mean, we're, there's nobody in the culture teaching us that it's not a good thing for us to get so wrapped up in what our money can buy. No, but even the world around us is not going to teach that lesson. We have to learn it. When we come back, we have to hear Joshua say, now when you get back in here, and when you come to back, back together as a faith community, choose which God you will serve. There are so, so many. So many. Old people like me. We live in a culture of youth and beauty so much that we've turned it into a God. Without youth and beauty, old people see, you know, we're, we're failing, our eyesight is failing, our energy is failing. And according to the God of youth and beauty, we keep trying to stay young. Instead of saying, I'm old, I'm an old elder now, y'all should listen to old elders. All of the gods that show up all around us are no different than the gods who showed up in, among the Amorites and the gods beyond the Euphrates, people have always had to make this decision. And I love that Joshua put it so honestly. Choose this day whom you will serve. And if you want to, you can serve any God you want. But me, my household, we're going to try to keep the God of Jesus Christ focused. We're going to try to keep the resurrection God, the one who brings new life every day. We're going to try to bring that one into focus. And the others begin to fade if we can but see ourselves in God's eyes. God who says, what should you do? You should seek justice. You should love mercy. And you should walk humbly with your God. That's your God, lest you forget. Amen. Let us pray together. I ask your prayers for the universal church, our bishops, our presiding bishop Michael and Mark, our own bishop. I pray for the members of St. Philip's Church, now scattered here and there, but still the church. I pray for the mission of St. Philip's to be people of love, 
to be people who feed those who are hungry, to be people who reach out to the lost. I ask your prayers for this nation and all of those in authority, especially during this tumultuous and painful and confusing time. Confusing, so confusing for our children. I ask you to pray daily for the nation. I ask your prayers for the welfare of the world, a world of hurricanes and earthquakes, typhoons, fires, people suffering all over the world with, without enough to eat in fear of what nature rises up and can do. I ask your prayers for the concerns of our own community, for Opal Lee, for Rebecca, Sally Jo, David, George, all those that you know and carry in your heart. And I ask your prayers for the departed. Let us pray for all of those in any need or suffer, suffering. Almighty God, grant that all the prayers the people of this faith family hold up to you, you will receive and turn them to your most holy will for our sake and for the sake of the world that you so love. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you on this day and always. Amen. <laughs>